Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Hello. Hi. Hey. things to the melody so I sang it myself and uh, ended up writing a whole song around it played it for the record label they liked it and uh, they put it out as a single and it was like this you can tell everybody yeah you can tell everybody go ahead and tell everybody I'm the man I'm the man I'm the man yes I am yes I am yes I am I'm the man I'm the man I'm the man I believe every lie that I ever told Paid for every heart that I ever stole I played my cards and I didn't fold Well, it ain't that hard when you got sold This is my world Somewhere I heard that 
life is a test I've been through the worst But I still get my best God made my mold different from the rest That he broke that mold So I know I'm blessed This is my world Stand up now and face the sun Won't hide my tail and turn and run It's time to do what must be done And be a king when kingdom comes Well you can tell everybody I'll be the teacher, you could be the lesson. I'll be the preacher, you be the confession. I'll be the quick relief to all your stresses. This is my world. It's a thin line between love and hate. Is you really real or is you really fake? I'm a soldier standing on my feet. No surrender, I won't be treated. Cause this is my world. Stand up now and face the Till I turn and run It's time to do what must be done And be a king when kingdom comes Well, you can tell everybody Yeah, you can tell everybody Go ahead and tell everybody I'm the man, I'm the man, I'm the man Well, you can tell everybody Yeah, you can tell everybody Before I became the man, <laughs> I, was a, I was an indie artist, kind of just doing what I could do to get through the music industry. And I, I had one really significant breakthrough that sent me to Europe for a few years. Um, a TV show called How to Make It in America used one of my songs as their, their opening theme. And uh, I'd like to do that one for you before we get out of here. Well, I need the dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. Said I need a dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. Yeah, hey. well I need a dollar, dollar, dollar is what I need. And if I share with you my story, would you share your dollar with me? Bad times are coming, and I reap what I done sown. Yeah, hey. well let me tell you something, all that good is ain't gold. Yeah, hey. well it's been a long old Bye. 
Questions, yeah, totally. let me know. But I, I have a question first. I want to know how many of you all knew all three songs? How many of you knew I sang all three songs? <laughs> I found out last week. <laughs> <Right? laughs> Wonderful. So this, this is the beautiful thing that, that you know gets to happen. When I meet guys like John and get to come out to the station and share the music and share the story and you guys get to know um, where I've been and what I'm up to. And, and hear all these songs you get to put together. Hopefully, you can be my fan, not just a song of the, a fan of the song at this point. And uh, we talked during sound check. And uh, where were you? Tell them about your past 24 hours because that that was a pretty amazing story, especially since you're a songwriter. Yeah. And you know all the songwriters, you know, talk to other songwriters. And there's uh, an event that happens once a year: the Songwriters Hall of Fame Awards induction ceremony and in the music industry there are a few nights there's American Music Awards, Country Music Awards, there's Grammys but um, within the industry itself this is one of the very very special nights the songwriters nights the nights where the people who actually write the songs not just the people singing them you know it's not always are the people singing the songs the ones who wrote them you know Sinatra is a big huge star but he didn't write any of the songs he sang there's somebody back there putting those those uh, words together that's tugging at your heart and um, I had a chance to to sing wake me up at this event and I also got a chance to see some of my my heroes the songwriters um, become inducted into the songwriters Hall of Fame one of which was a man by the name of Jim Weatherly who um, after the, the event he came up to me and and congratulated me on my performance and told me he was a big fan and Jim Weatherly Obviously, we don't know, you don't know his name, and I didn't even know his name. But I had heard the song so many times. Um, um, well, last train to Georgia? Well, I, wanted to sing, I wanted to sing the line, but I was trying to figure out which line to sing. Right. But, yeah. I'm leaving on that midnight train to Georgia yeah. Yeah. that I'm coming back to find. Ooh, is it a place and time? So he wrote that, you know, and, and to, to meet him and to, you know, hear that he's a fan and his kids wanted to take a picture with me and then to have him invite me to Nashville to write with him, that was like, it's, it's a dream. Because, I mean, I think most of you know that song and it's probably, you know, comforted you in some moment at, at some point in time or at least ran through your head. And uh, it's beautiful be able to have this as the job that we do and it was wonderful for me to meet a hero like that what's the one song um, that you wish was yours oh there are so many <laughs> the uh, one that's the emotional connection it's like wow I should have that that should have been mine the well, there's two I always think about um, don't worry be happy <laughs> I think how simple it is and how beautiful it is. And I always wanted to be the guy to come up with the next song like that and Pharrell beat me to it. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, and the other song would be One Love. What about Marley? Anyone have any questions? Um, do you still play horns? No. I really don't. I, I'm actually a really poor musician when it comes to practicing any <laughs> instruments or even practicing my vocals. I don't, I don't warm up or anything like I'm supposed to. Um, well, who arranged those horn parts on on Good Things? It's the horn parts on my album. There's a soul music outfit called Truth and Soul mm -hmm. in Williamsburg, uh, New York, uh, led by Leon Michaels, who plays saxophone and a bunch of other horns. Arranged all the horns. Yeah, no problem. Anyone else? You, I'm sorry. You would also know him from 
Are you familiar with Jay Z's song Rock Boys? Yeah. That was also Leon Michaels. Yeah, and he um, he sometimes moonlights in the Dap Kings with Sharon Jones. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Um, how old were you when you realized that singing is what you wanted to do? Well. I got laid off from my job at about 24. <laughs> what, what were you doing? I was a business consultant um, in the health sector, so I was working at hospitals, helping them improve care, um, helping them collect money from insurance companies. Oh. But, um, <laughs> right? Oh, man. But there was a reduction of force. The company wanted to, to slim down, and I got laid off. And I had already been doing music as a hobby, so I decided I would just continue to do music until I had to get another job, but luckily things just started happening positively for me. Thanks. Anyone else? You recently did a uh, mentor on The Voice. Yeah, that was would a that, lot of fun. Would, would that be something you'd want to do as a... I'd really person? like to, but I, I, I feel like I need to have another three albums or two albums or something before <laughs> before I can really justify being a, a, an advisor on The Voice. and. Um, it was good for me though, because I got to learn about myself. There's not a lot of times that I get to actually put into words what it is that I'm doing, and to explain it to other folks um, was helpful for me to to really you know, spell it out. Who are your favorite artists? A lot of them are are the legacy artists. I mean, you know, when I grew up listening to hip hop, that's what got me into music. So making making rap music back in the day it was de la soul and tribe called quest early early hip-hop stuff um but then i started listening to joni mitchell and james taylor and cat stevens and of course sam cook and stevie wonder then there's a lot of brazilian stuff that i started listening to georgia ben antonio carlos jobim uh, caetano veloso and then the, the the crooners um the whole all the rat pack and then, so that's, you know, Dean Martin, Sinatra, uh, Sammy Davis Jr., and then Nat King Cole, and with, um, Mel Torme is one of my very favorite. Uh, living or dead, who would you like to work with the most? Mm. The Dalai Lama. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you have your Next ten albums, right there. After we're working, right? Back exactly. Out. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Once you reach that kind of spiritual yeah, I mean, level, then you know. any other questions? I oh. have. What's the one thing that you have learned since being in the music industry? Because a lot of artists come in the music industry and then you don't hear from them no more. Mm -hmm. They're like one hit wonders yeah. or one album wonders. So what's the one thing you learn about staying in this music industry and keep on going till you reach that level? I really firmly believe that you have to be making music for fun, it has to be your passion, and you honestly, it sounds weird, but don't focus on it as a career path, do it for fun. And that fun will translate, and people will hear it, and they'll come to you, and your fans will come to you, and when the fans come to you, then the business people come to you. And that's. That's it. And you could sing a one-hit wonder, but if you don't write it, and you know, because that's where yeah. it's at, you know. Yeah, that's that's also yeah, being being part of the writing process. But if if you, what you are as an entertainer and a singer, then you know, continue to do that for fun. Yeah. You know, and and don't ever worry about it. You know, a lot of people ask me, how do you get to the next level? And I think if you get out the studio and you feel like you made something that makes you proud, then you're at that next level. Um, I became interested in you as an artist whenever you know, I found out you were a hip hop artist and then mm -hmm. I heard you know, the man. So I just want to know, you know, what do you think of today's hip hop and do you ever see yourself coming back into it? I still record a lot of hip hop. I have about three unreleased albums just because I can't figure out how to release them amidst what I do now. Mm -hmm. um, but what I do is a brand of hip-hop that is very, very different from what's on the radio today and what 
what uh, the reason why I kind of left hip hop was because it was getting a bit. It was it was too violent. It was too misogynistic. It was it wasn't really speaking to me or telling messages that I wanted to tell. So you know, the the things that um, that that I would do as a hip hop artist, I don't think would work in the marketplace. It just wouldn't. Or maybe it would. Maybe people really want it, but I just I need to figure out a way to get it out. And, yeah, so I think with pop, pop music and that has kind of evolved, especially in the past three years, different is good, you know, mm -hmm. because who, who who knew that, you know, top 40 pop stations would play something like Mumford & Sons, right. you know. You're right. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So different is good. Cool. Definitely. Any other questions? Um, you have two versions of the band. Um, which one is your favorite one? Which version did you hear? Uh, yeah, exactly. Two versions of Wake Me Up? No, no there's the like, so like one video, right? It's got you on stage, right? You come up out the stage, and then your uh, original one, right? It's like that got you walking through, like. So music video. You talking yeah. about music yeah, video? Music video. Yeah, that's oh, not yeah. I'm sorry. Well, this is this is my good friend Ryan Calavano on the on the camera. Hi, Ryan. He put, <laughs> he put together the lyric video, oh, okay. so that's what you're talking about, gotcha. and I really like that one. I thought that was a special one, and, and with his help. Um, but then when we had the idea, the, the opportunity to do an official music video, and the record label came with the idea of um, depicting uh, people that I considered the man for whatever reason, for standing up to the challenges that, that they faced. So in the music video, the opening scene, I. I'm depicting the cover of Marvin Gaye's album, What's Going On? And so Marvin Gaye, that album, released on Motown, almost never came out because the, the owner, Barry Gordy, didn't think that the world was ready for political soul music. So he, 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 he shelved it. And Marvin just kept fighting for his album to be released. And so I, I depicted Marvin Gaye for that reason, for, for being the man and standing up for what he believes in. Won't hide my tail or turn and run. It's time to do what must be done. And uh, also, that song has been featured on uh, some commercials, oh, yeah. featuring athletes. Right. Who's your favorite athlete that was on uh, that commercial? I, I mean, I'm an older cat, so I'll go with Kevin Garnett. I'm okay. <laughs> Very nice. Any other questions? Can I double dip? Um, do you have any collaborations in the works? Would you ever consider doing like a hip hop collaboration with like? Q-tip or? I would, I absolutely would. And, and those would be the artists that I would work with first, the, the artists that I grew up listening to. Um, I had an opportunity to go in the studio with Nas and I completely, uh, I completely botched the whole thing. <laughs> I, I went in and my voice wasn't where it needed to be, so I wasn't feeling comfortable, but I wrote something and I even, in, in the session, suggested to him how he could end his verse. And I was like, you know, Nas, when you, when you finish the verse, because here's what I'm going to do for the chorus. When you finish the verse, you should say it like this. And over the mic, he was like, yeah, that's genius. <laughs> <laughs> that was a crazy moment. And um, at the end of the session, he was like, aren't you going to finish recording? I said, no, nah, I mean, you should get a, a female to sing this part. I was trying to play producer instead of just going in there and just finishing the part for him. It didn't end up making his album, but I'm sure you know, something will happen in the future. Anyone nervous that, that, that you worked with and you just, it's like, oh my God, I'm well, nervous, this person? Um, not that I've worked with nervous, but um, but there was that, the, the meeting with Dr. Dre, <laughs> where, <laughs> where he, he had heard I need a dollar and he wanted to, to meet with me. And so I sent forth music that I was recording for the album um, and when we got together, you know, long story short, it, it was a, it was a discussion where he was like, "Your music is not good enough." Oh dear. But it wasn't, "You're not good enough." Right. It's like what you sent is not good enough. Go back and make better. And that's when I did the man, and uh, knocked it out the park. That's Inspiring. Right. Mm -hmm. Totally. Any other questions? 
Happy like Columbia so far. <laughs> so far, so good. It's a beautiful city. But you've been here for a while. A couple of hours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a couple of hours. It's nice. The station is nice. Yeah. I go, what was your I made it moment? Like, like, you know, you were on the draft. Your song was the song they played throughout the whole NFL yeah. draft.